good afternoon, Mr. Bass. I understand you have some important information that you'd like to share with us, the public. Oh, most definitely. We want to talk about uh, the, uh, the heat that we've been experiencing. Uh, let's review the past hurricane season and what's driving this hurricane season for 2024, which is this year. And um, what are the outlooks for this hurricane season and the outlooks for the next five months in terms of rainfall and temperature for Barbados? Okay, so you started with heat. Tell me about this heat because it's been unusually hot for the past couple of months. Yeah, hot for days, I tell you. So let me look at, let's look at maximum temperatures first. Um, so this is the, the, the previous climatology is the, the, the dash blue line and the dash green one is the current climatology. That's data from 1981 to 2010. You've got to got a reference point for everything. This orange line is last year. Now, if you look at one year in particular, you're going to see those fluctuations. It's not really going to be smooth like the averages. But what we really want to show you from a maximum temperature perspective, this red or maroon like color line here you see it's actually above everything that's where we are now in april we are above average for in terms of maximum temperature average last year and for the climatological average that's huge let's look at the um peak maximum temperature last year you know we broke record last year highest temperature ever recorded charnox 34.2 beating the previous record at 33.1 this year we are already above average in terms of maximum temperatures, peak maximum temperatures, with the fact that the oceans are warm. There's a possibility we could get really close to that record or maybe even break it this year. Going down into the average minimum temperature, now, there's one thing to have the maximum temperature increasing or being warmer, but what's the night, night times like? No, the, the, the minimum temperature is not being that low at night. So instead of having a nice cool down at night, you having like this change in temperature the maximum is going higher and the lower lower temperature or the maximum minimum if you like in the night is actually getting higher so the nights don't feel that comfortable as you're used to feeling so it's not that you don't really have that relief during the night from these really high intense temperature days so that lack of relief mr best is why the heat feels so draining recently it does it's relentless especially when you don't get rainfall events relentless okay. we expect that to continue we're going to get similar uh, what we had last year, 2023, again here in 2024. Be ready. Okay, so with this heat, does it have an impact on the hurricane season? Did it have an, did it have an effect on the past hurricane seasons? Does it have an, an impact on the hurricane season that's coming? Uh, you bet your bottom dollar it does. This heat is going to, all the energy is going to be stored in oceans. And so the warmer it is, the more energy is going to be in oceans. And that was fueling the hurricanes from the bottom and obviously the venting from the top, which we'll talk about later. But let's look at this chart that we got from the University of Maine. Again, I'm not going to really go very technical for you folks. But in here, in the middle here, that's really averages. This orange line is last year in terms of sea surface temperature in our area. This is 0 to 60 degrees north, 0 to 80 degrees west. Orange line last year broke records. Broke records last year. Never before measured before all the way back to 1981. Broke records. Now look at this year. This is the black line. Now it's coming back to meet the orange line last year, which is good, but we're still above, way above average from the climatological mean. That's huge. In other words, there's energy there for these cyclones to develop. There's a lot. And so you now this brings us to La Nina. La Nina. We're moving in this little year, or the year progress, I should say. We're going to be transitioning from the neutral phase to La Nina, which is an environment that's more conducive for tropical cyclones to develop. So I mentioned the energy from the bottom in the oceans. And so it's, as these systems develop and grow, they need to breathe at the top. So La Nina presents a better environment for the tropical storms to actually develop and intensify. So you're saying that it makes, this, it makes it more favorable for storms to develop. What does that mean for us here in Barbados? Yeah, that's always the important question, what it means for us. Um, you got forecasts, before we go to forecasts, let's, let's look at the history. Because you got to understand the history sometimes before we go into the forecast, because then you can see the trends. Let's look at, this is 30-year climatological um, um, measures of the passes with ter in terms of 100 kilometers and 50 kilometers of barriers in terms of the center of tropical cyclones. Let's look at the last one, 1991 to 2020. So what jumps out at us, this red bar, which is... 50 kilometers from Barbados. Look at, the, look at the decades before. 
they're really small. I mean, two, three, maybe four. But this this one, 1991, 2020, we had a jump six. And I can tell you, most of those actually happened within the last eight, 10 years. We hurry off to head start, 2021 to 23, and the red bar is neck and neck with the blue. Let me just break that down real simple for you. What this is saying is that these systems, the centers of them, are passing closer to us. Closer to us. In the past few years, that's what's been happening. Elsa, Thomas, etc. Dorian, they're passing closer. We have to be ready. This is the first thing what it means for us. These systems are developing earlier in the season, and therefore they're forming further south. And we are seeing more, more tropical cyclones. And if you see more, the more likely the odds are increasing that you can be impacted. So let's go into the actual forecast. Now, this is from this is forecast from Colorado State, Tropical Star Risk, and University of Arizona. And NOAA is not out yet. But for the for the the prediction centers that actually have forecasts out, all of them are predicting above normal hurricane season. I think this is well established. Everyone has been hearing that the hurricane season is going to be really active. Well above average. The average is 14 or so named storms. Everyone is predicting above 20. Average is for seven of which becomes hurricanes. Everyone is predicting above 11. Well, 11, sorry. And the average for major hurricanes, three of which become major hurricanes, everyone has, again, uh, actually above around five. That's almost double. So we're looking for really intense hurricane season. This is not that we focus on the actual number of how many. It only takes one. The fact that there are going to be so many, that means the odds are higher. It's stacked higher. But Mr. Bass, the Atlantic Basin is a big basin. And this is, I'm imagining these forecasts are for the entire Atlantic. What about our region specifically? Beautiful question. It's a fantastic question. Because you see 22 storms, people think, is it 22 storms heading here? No, 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 no. And so what we decided to do, um, first off, this is Barbados here, and this is the Atlantic Ocean area east of us, the main development area where systems would develop and head towards Barbados or the Eastern Caribbean. And so what we did, we look at the climate law average in terms of systems developing within this area, which is somewhere between uh, around five storms, two hurricanes, and one major hurricane. And so we use statistics and also a deterministic model to come up with a prediction of what it's going to actually look like in this area for the hurricane season. And so our, our, this experimental model comes up with seven named storms, four of which become hurricanes, and two become major hurricanes. That is for this area. But I don't want you to focus on the number. What is important here is to understand that even in our area, where there will be de development of tropical cyclones, that that is going to be above average. That's what's important. Okay, so this talks about something that will affect us maybe every couple of weeks that we would like. Um, you would give us some good warning on. So what can we expect day to day for most of the season? So let us go, let's drill down into the rainfall because, I mean, you can look at last year and year in front. You have tropical cyclones, you're not being directly impacted by it. You can have feeder bands, you can have light winds, you get really intense rainfall events. I've said before, you have to have something on your person to give you quick fire alerts about when there's a significant event, especially heavy rainfall intense events or severe thunderstorms. These things happen within minutes. You're not going to get days lead warning on small meso scale systems. You get days lead warning on storms, large systems. But these smaller systems, the size, size of Barbados or a Parish, these take minutes and you have to have the Cap.Cap .cap app on you or our BMS Insight app on you. You can check our social media pages. And one of the best things that someone actually told me that they do is just to use their senses. Let's look, have a look outside. It also looks a little gray and strange. Have a look at the forecast. That's what's important. So rainfall, we, we expect rainfall on the island to be average, just above average. But there's a, there's a bit of a seesaw right here because if there's a lot of systems to develop and pass north of Barbados, that could cut off a lot of rainfall, normal white scale rainfall events and see a lot more small isolated pockets of heavy rainfall events. That's what we had last year. So we've seen a disparity of rainfall accumulation across various sections of the island. One part here, St. Lucie gets flooded. The next part here, Christchurch gets flooded. So we've seen small, intense events, and that's, we really are confident that's going to happen again this year. 
So back again to the heat, because I'm really concerned about how we need to cope for the next couple of months in terms of the heat. Oh, man, let's tell you, this is really is hot. So this is to give you some kind of idea. You can see the outline of Barbados here. And, and I, 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 think, I believe it's no surprise to the general public that Bridgetown area is actually going to be hotter because it's built up these urban areas and high elevations is a little bit cooler during the day, cooler. Um, to give you an idea, this is June, July. We move down into September. Now, September is the peak of our heat season, September. And especially when we have storms that pass in north and cutting off what they call the air supply. We're going to be expecting temperatures to probably soar, comfortably with 34, peaking, peaking possibly at 35 degrees Celsius in the Bridgetown urban areas. Now, the center of the island is actually going to have maxes maybe at 30, 31. That's actually kind of really high, maybe a degree, a degree and a half above what is actually normal. So it's going to be hot. It's, it's, it is a case where we have to understand what's coming. I mean, it's already here. It's already pretty hot outside for right now. The, the, the maximums and average temperature we're having is like compared to June, July, where we are right now. So we like advance in time. But September is going to be really hot, really warm, and can be uncomfortable, especially at nights in September. We have to be ready for that. And having that knowledge, you know what's coming, you can prepare for it. Okay, so this is a lot of information for us to remember. What are the key points, Mr. Best, that you would like us to keep in mind for the next couple months? That is true. I mean, a lot of this is technical. Maybe well, some of it is technical, and you, a lot of you will not be interested in this technical information. It's like, okay, what are you taking from this? It's a high probability of above average season. We're certain about that, really certain. Short, intense, isolated showers, just like last year. Isolated, rapid onset events, and they happen real fast, really quick. You're not gonna get those days, even half of the advance warning. You know, one thing I said before, persons and on an institutional level, you have to have your emergency plans as to how you will function during an immediate rapid or rapid onset event, such as a severe thunderstorm, heavy rainfall, and even a tsunami. What are you going to do? You have to have these plans from a personal level and institutional level. Otherwise, when you find these things actually unfolding, you're gonna find things gonna be scattering all over the place. You have to have these plans. Hot summer ahead. It's kind of here already, but it's gonna get hotter. It's gonna get warmer, as you say. That's coming, especially in September. That's the peak, September, but it's going to progressively get warmer. And like I mentioned, uh, have plans in place for excessive heat. Severe thunderstorms, I mentioned that before. Have your plans in place for excessive heat. Keep hydrated. Listen to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. They will give some really, really good information on how you can ensure that you're hydrated, uh, that, you, that you, you put all the uh, things in place that things in your workplace, in your home. Listen to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Um, and also, yeah, like I mentioned on a personal and institutional level, that's really important how you actually react. It's, everything starts at the grassroots, the person, the institution. And also, like I, this will be backed up from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, even the Ministry of Agriculture in terms of the farmers, a lot on the Department of Emergency Management, the information that we provide help you to prepare. That is very, very critical, especially for this 2024. I need everybody everybody to work together and listen to this message. Listen to this message in the early and be ready.